Hare Krishna. Question Why is Prithra Sur depicted as a demon in the Rigveda and as a devotee in the Bhagavatam? Answer The Bhagavatam also doesn't hide the fact that Rutrasur is a demon. His formidable, fearsome form is described graphically in the Bhagavatam. And how just seeing him terrorizes many of the soldiers on the demigod side and how they flee in horror on seeing him, that is also depicted. So, the fact that he is a demon is consistent across the scriptures. However, every scripture has a particular focus, has a particular emphasis. And according to that emphasis, the uh, narrative is shaped. So, the, the Rig Veda and the Vedas in general focus on uh, Karmakanda. Krishna says, Traigunya Vishaya Veda, Nistraigunya Bhavarjuna in 2.44. So, Traigunya Vishaya Veda. The Vedas talk about Karmakanda, that means how by doing Dharma one can get Artha Kama. And Moksha is not talked about directly in the Vedas, they talked about primarily in the Upanishads. So, so now, uh, in that narrative, the point is if one lives a life of dharma, then one will attain success. One will attain uh, victory. So, Indra is portrayed as a deva and uh, the deva follows dharma and the demons are generally dharmic. So, how the, de how the dharmic deva conquers over the uh, adharmic asura is described in the Rig Veda. So the essential narrative, the specific forms can vary in the sense that how Rutra looks like or specifically how they fight or what they dialogue, what is their conversation if they have any. That can vary because these pastimes can happen across various kalpas. And different pastimes will be recorded at different, in different, uh, uh, different scriptures. But the important point is that what is the mess, carry home message. So in the Rig Veda it is that if you do dharma, then you will be victorious. And Indra is depicted as practically the, uh, uh, the quintessential uh, model of the successful fruity worker. Indra, when he is on earth, he has done a lot of yakya and now he goes to heavens. And he has power, he has position, he has uh, wealth and he has enjoyment. Bhogaishwarya. So that's what is, that was his, so the depiction of Indra defeating uh, and killing Rutra is, is consistent with the purpose of the Rig Veda of glorifying the Devtas and encouraging people at least to the level of practicing Karma Kanda so that they are not, so that even if they want to be materialistic, they will be religiously materialistic and not irreligiously materialistic. That means they will at least follow Dharma to get Artha and Kama and not seek Adharma, not do Adharma in, the, in seeking Artha and Kama. Now, if we move forward, the in the <coughs> Mahabharata itself, the story of Rutrasur comes along again, and there there are more nuances in that story. So, Rutrasur, in the, when the story comes in the Mahabharata, he is depicted as a wise demon. Now, he's a demon still, but he's a wise demon, and he gives instructions to Indra. And now, the Bhagavatam continues that, and he gives not just uh, instructions on the uh, temporariness of material existence, which is what uh, uh, he focuses, what is the fo thrust of the instruction in the Mahabharata. Uh, and the Bhagavatam is focusing essentially on Bhakti. And while focusing on Bhakti, the Bhagavatam uh, <coughs> actually demonstrates the uh, way in which bhakti trumps all normal uh, hierarchies. So whether it's so normal hierarchy means say there are upper caste people and there are lower caste people. So the sannyasi is higher than a grahastha or a brahmana is higher than a kshatriya. But the Bhagavatam trumps this by showing how Durvasa Muni who is a grahastha and a kshatriya he is revealed as far greater than Durvasa Muni, who is a sannyasi and a brahmana. So similarly, normally a devata is considered to be higher than a 
uh, Asura. But in the Bhagavatam narrative, the Asura becomes higher than Devta because the Devta is attached. Although both are in one sense Bhaktas, but Indra is more of an attached devotee. He, he does Bhakti, but his Bhakti is largely Sakam Bhakti. Whereas Vitrasur, he, he has a demoniac body and he acts according to the demoniac body as is impelled by the Lord from within. But eventually, he surrenders to the Lord. And he, and he, he when he is faced with death, Although he's such a fearsome demon that just the sight of him will strike terror in the hearts of observers. But that demon has a tender heart that when he's in his final stages uh, of his life, he gives such a vivid, poetic and uh, moving metaphors. He says, Ajata Pakshai Vakha Taramata. He says, just as Stannamiva, he talks about how this is a, a small bird who has not yet developed its wings. It longs for its mother to come back and feed it. Just as a, uh, a calf longs for the cow to come so that he can drink milk. And just as a, uh, as, as a lover longs for her beloved to return. So like that, my dear Lord, I long for you. So his tender heart amidst his fear, uh, within his fearsome exterior is also revealed. So the Bhagavatam's focus is not just on uh, what happens at the material level, who wins and who loses. So essentially, at the material level, the narrative remains the same, at least in the short term, that that Indra Indra wins and Uttarasur loses. But in terms of consciousness, Indra is an attached devotee and that's why when he finds that I can't, uh, I may not win, Uttarasur is so powerful. And although he has a weapon which is got not just from Dadachi's bones, there is the power of that weapon, but also that weapon has been given, that, the arrangement for that weapon has been revealed by the Lord himself. So it is as per the Lord's plan. But when he sees that his plan is not being successful, he doesn't even have faith in the Lord's plan. And he starts thinking, oh, what is the use of fighting if I can't win? When he sees the power of uh, Ritrasur. But although Ritrasur's plan is going to fail, he's fighting and he's going to lose and he's going to be killed. But still, because he has surrendered to the Lord, so he is not only facing death gracefully, but he encourages Indra. And he gives him good advice and good instruction, and thus he elevates Indra's consciousness. And then, the Bhagavatam's further depiction is, of course, uh, Rutra dies long before Indra kills his, uh, cuts off his neck. Because Rudrasura has gone in trance, and his soul has left his body and attained by Kunta. But the, uh, the Bhagavad further describes how Indra then has to suffer the consequences of Brahmahatya. Because earlier he has killed uh, uh, Vishwarupa, who was the son of a Brahmana Atvashta, and now he has killed Rutrasur, who is also, in one sense, created uh, like, like a son of a Brahmana, because he had been created by a Brahmana Atvashta through a fire sacrifice. Now, the Bhagavatam's stress is not even on this. That actually the Bhagavatam stresses that even an offense as grievous as Brahmatya, uh, that it's uh, sin, even a sin as grievous as that, that can be countered if one engages in hearing chanting. Of course, this is not a um, encouragement that we uh, that somebody does Brahmatya, somebody do Brahmatya, and and then do hearing chanting and and plan it all in such a way that oh, actually as long as I do hearing and chanting, Brahmatya won't matter. No, that is not the point. That will become the seventh offense and the Bhagavatam definitely does not encourage that. But seventh offense is to commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name. Uh, to think that because I am chanting, I can do sinful activities and I will get away with it. That uh, mentality is not approved. But if one commits sinful activities, no matter how grievous they may be, if one absorbs oneself in Bhakti, Shravanakirtan of the Supreme Lord, one will transcend the transcend the. Uh, reactions because the Lord will protect such a person. So that is the stress of what the Bhagavatam is teaching. And in every narrative, we should focus on what is stressed. And so the Bhagavatam, because its focus is on teaching the transcendence of Bhakti, how Bhakti enables a person to go beyond the normal hierarchies in terms of uh, who is higher and who is, who is pious and impious and further how bhakti can enable one to uh, count to transcend even grievous sinful reactions.
So in the Bhagavatam, that is the stress, and that's why Dhritarashtra is depicted not just as a demon, which is there, but within the demon's body is depicted as a Mahabhagavat Vaishnava. Thank you. Hare.